After configuration is complete, the Monitor tab shows the linked channels, indicators, and controls, like channel number and channel name, an icon for the transmitter type, primary or secondary linking status, the microphone status, if charging, actively transmitting, in standby, externally controlled, inactive, or powered off, audio and RF level indication, gain adjustment, EQ filtering, and the controls for changing the linked devices for each channel. For larger configurations or to be certain that you have selected the correct device, an identification procedure is available. When moving the mouse button over the icons for the linked devices, an interactive ID icon will appear. Clicking on it will flash the LEDs on the device for identification purposes as well as trigger an audible beep tone. At the bottom of the Monitor tab, you can find the section for the Return Channel settings. You can monitor the signal level and mute or unmute the audio of the return channel. The audio is sent directly to the 3.5mm headphone jack on the body pack, boundary, and gooseneck transmitters. Please note that if the system is operated in high-density mode, any return channel is disabled. If an MXW Annie 8 is connected to the system, there are two return channel sections. In case of an MXW Annie 4, there's only one. On the very right-hand side of the Monitor tab are some global mic controls, like setting all transmitters to active, to mute, to standby, or off status. Here you can also start the Spectrum Scanner. When starting a Spectrum Scan, a confirmation window will pop up to remind the user that during a scan, all microphone transmitters linked to this access point will be turned off by the system. Here you can see the scan results for the standard density mode. The colored indication of available spectrum is converted into an estimated number of available channels. One range of channels, here 26 to 28, is given if the spectrum is used in a more conservative way, meaning the channel stability is a bit more robust, while the other range, here 31 to 34, results from a more aggressive use of spectrum with the target to achieve more usable channels. The difference between both bars is that the upper one shows the current snapshot measurement, while the lower one reflects the minimum spectrum availability over a period of the last 24 hours, or until the scan ends. The same scan approach can be done when selecting high density mode, which generally optimizes the system for twice the achievable forward channel count. Ending the spectrum scan clears the current view, but keeps the information for the minimum view. The Clear Scan button also allows you to clear the minimum information if desired. A confirmation window acts as a security measure beforehand.